goes low goes before your lame movie. What are these tally marks keeping track of? They obviously aren't days, and if he's keeping track of something, wouldn't you at least add up the tallies for each month? This kid ties a rock to his ankle so that he'll be sunk into the sea, land on the Flying Dutchman, and cause the ship to float to the surface. How the f*** does he know this will work? Also, I know we're supposed to remember all the stuff at the end of Pirates of the Caribbean, the curse of the dead stranger's chest at the world's end, but are you telling me that in one visit, Will was able to tell Henry all about the Dutchman's whereabouts and how to get it to the surface? Movie severely overestimates my desire to keep track of which ship is which after four movies. They know you're here. The real question is, why aren't they already on deck? The ship made a pretty dramatic rise to the surface. Also, aren't you the captain of this ship now? Why does it matter if they know he's here? I thought you took over after the third movie. I want you to come home. And this kid really feels a lot of love for a guy he's seen one time in his life. Also, why did he come here and risk his life just to tell his dad he knows something that can break his curse without getting that thing first? Henry, I'm sorry. So about those guys you were worried about a minute ago? Did they get lost on the way to do whatever you were worried about them doing? So despite it not having any kind of anchor and being pushed aside by the wake of the Flying Dutchman's ascent, this tiny boat is still just hanging out, waiting for little Henry. No, don't do it! Don't do it! Back in the day, human hearing was so good they could detect someone yelling over all the cannon fire and hundreds of men shouting. I've spent my life studying the myths of the sea. I know every legend and every curse. And I sold them all to Disney so they could make more god-awful sequels in this franchise for at least the next 50 years. No, no. I'm sorry, sir. This one is clearly disturbed. Why haven't you tackled him yet? Why has he been allowed to speak this long? Pirates of the Caribbean at World War Z's end. Do you know this pirate? You're looking for him? Of all the jail joints and all the ships and all the seas, he walks into mine. <laughs> for too many years, the triangle has cursed us. The key to our escape is at his barrel and the compass which he holds. Jesus Christ, the setup for this movie is no different than the first one. And really, how many of these movies are going to have some cursed ship with a bunch of dead, semi-dead, and undead dudes on it? Tell him I want to behold the daylight again. Because in this very movie, he'll give away his compass, which will somehow bring me daylight and do nothing else in particular. Death will come straight for him. Honestly, Henry could simply not tell Jack about Salazar at all and he'd be totally okay. There's absolutely no deal struck here, no danger. So why did he ever need to tell Jack about this encounter? The men tell no tales. Roll frigates. Movie reminds you of which movie this is 13 minutes in, but I'll forget five minutes later anyway. Accused of practicing witchcraft. Before you die, do you have anything to confess? I confess that I am not a witch, that I am a woman of science. This is either the late 1700s or the early 2020s. I can't figure out which. And I confess that while we've been talking, I picked this lock. And there's absolutely no guards who will stop me after I escape my cell. Hold your fire! Drunk bimbo ex machina. Also, what a crazy scenario this movie's come up with. Jack apparently had no trouble getting into this safe, managed to take a sex partner into the safe with him, and they apparently drank and f***ed on the money. All while this crew waited until the bank unveiled the safe the next morning to try and steal it? Do I have that right? Also, safe sex. There's a woman with him! In the no, there wasn't. Even if she somehow buried beneath that gold, she certainly would have been awakened by him landing directly on top of her as he rolled out. She appeared out of thin air. Maybe she's the witch they're looking for. Shoot him! They don't. Also, am I the only one who's rooting for the British to kill Jack once and for all? It takes a lot to make this American root for 18th century British people, but five movies like this will do it. <laughs> no. Also, because nobody likes money, everyone stands here and watches the bank literally drift away while also not killing an even easier to kill Jack Sparrow. That was no part of the plan. Why is there a rope just lying here on the floor? It wasn't being used for the heist. It seems only to be here to give Jack yet another cheap escape from an unescapable situation. No woman's ever handled my Herschel. This would never be the first thing he says to her, or the way he says it. Ever. Forced double entendres are the weakest double entendres. Also, what is she looking for through a telescope in the middle of the day? What if it was pointed at the sun? Careful. Play with your Herschel too much, you might go blind. There's no way this bank makes this turn unless it's on a track. For Pete's sake, Fast Five was less ridiculous, and when you're taking physics lessons from the Fast franchise, it may be time to call it a day. Have either of the four of you seen my bank? Didn't the bank just come through here? It left Jack behind a minute ago, so why would it be coming anywhere near him? Normally, this type of thing would break the sin counter, but it's seen worse. This thing's been through five Transformers, 17 Fast and Furiouses, four and a quarter of these movies, and traveled through time, so this ain't no thing. Black Pearl has never left me side. Honestly, I don't know which is more ridiculous, that the movie thinks I remember why this ship is in his pocket, or that it thinks I even care. The pirate Barbosa rules the seas now. I sure am glad you clarified that it's the pirate Barbosa, because I would have thought you meant Freud Barbosa, the Tuna King. Face it, Jack. Bad luck dogs you day and night. Gibbs clearly hasn't seen the other four movies, or at least the last ten minutes of this one. Watch it, Seagull. That's our job. My father is trapped by such a curse. You're aware that curses are not supported by science. Neither are ghosts. 
So you have gone mad. But you came here to talk to this guy about the trident, which you do believe in, but you don't believe in ghosts or curses. So Poseidon, possible, curses, not. Got it. But this map has never been seen nor read by any man. Luckily, I'm a woman. Oh, so the map is cocklocked then? Makes sense. This is the diary of Galileo Galilei. He spent his life searching for the trident. Galileo was a pretty smart dude, and we find out later that basically, you just have to follow some stars to find it. You mean, with all the information he had, he couldn't do that? Give me the bottle. Shouldn't the bartender have to accept this trade before any of this reverse the curse nonsense actually starts to happen? For some reason, Sauron dies again in this movie. Also, if my memory serves, it's not like this is the first time Jack has given this thing to someone else. Why didn't that set things in motion? Why is this bartender so eager to grab the compass? Does he know what it is? Is it an earthquake? Because if I think something you're trying to give me is causing an earthquake, I'm sending you the hell away from my bar. Capitan! What's happening? Jack Sparrow has given away the compass. Oh. What they're free from is anyone's guess. I suppose it could mean constant darkness, but everyone on this boat is still cursed and dead-looking, and can't touch land, so what the f*** are they free from? Luckily for the plot of this movie, Karina was put into a cell, complete with a moon roof, so that she could read the map that you can only read under a blood moon. I need to speak with you. Can we talk about how Sparrow set this up? Later we see he used some sort of hay to create the shape, but what did he bind it with? Stand it up with? How does it balance? Impossible scare Sparrow is impossible. Does mommy ever ask about me? She called my name in her sleep. Gross. You do still want us to kind of actually like Jack Sparrow, right? Movie? Hello? And you could be the one who holds the sea and with it become all that you once were. The great... I believe this is exactly how Johnny Depp approaches this character now. He calls it method sleeping. The trident can never be found. Funny, after four movies, Barbosa still thinks stuff like finding the trident is impossible, but all the other mind-blowing bullshit in these movies was possible. The dead are conquering the sea, unable to step on dry land. But why? They told us Davy Jones could only step on dry land every ten years, and that was a rule specific to the Flying Dutchman. But apparently, no dead men at sea can touch dry land? Arbitrary curse rules continue to be arbitrary. How did you get this? I have my ways. That's screenwriter speak for we have no f***ing clue either. Also, if this woman is an honest to god witch, why isn't she dead? They were ready to kill not a witch Karina almost immediately. Time to make a deal with the dead. This witch told him that the cost of entering this room would be blood, but she just gives the compass to him without any payment because something something in the past. Uncle Jack! Jackie boy! I can't believe they got Pete Best to play Jack's uncle. Why are these guards even allowing this? We strip away all human rights and decency here, but hey, if you need to have a conversation with another inmate while we are dragging you somewhere, by all means, go ahead. Quiet! The biggest proof that she may actually be a witch is that this works. Most of you have the mind of a goat. Pardon me, sir. I hate to bring up stuff like this in a movie filled with pirates, witches, zombies, curses, and tridents, but would this town square really have dual executions going on, with one a hanging and another a beheading? Is this Tecapalooza? I believe I was making a point. If you could just be patient. No! This goes on for some time, and none of the kill-happy Brits decides to kill someone and end this stupid scene and movie. I guess Henry knew there would be some sort of delay in killing Karina and Jack, or else this rescue attempt would have been super late. Enough! Kill them both! Yeah. This random spectator would be amazing at cinema sins. No, sir. I'm just a diversion. Diversion divulsion. <laughs> Gillotees. You have a sword. She's being hung with a rope. Swords can cut ropes. Jeez, do I really have to spell this out for you? Also, pretty sure that rope is long enough that Little Miss Can't Be Wrong could just step off that trap door. You know, if she was really worried about dying and stuff. If she can be caught here, with that much slack still in the rope, this hanging was never going to work. Unless the goal was simply to break her ankles when she hit the ground. Leave come crawling back, traitor! The Turner boy gave us ten silver pieces to save your neck! How did Henry know who Jack's crew was? Or did he just stumble upon some people who would do this job and it just happened to be Jack's old crew? Considering where your left hand is, I'd say we're more than that! You're holding everything but my word! How exactly did he catch her if his hand is inappropriately placed? Did he go to the Weinstein School of Catching Things? Then I bestow upon you the honor of saving me! For a small donation! You expect us to pay you to save you?! Apparently, yes, that's what the movie is saying, and there is no explanation for why this works. Ah! How much of this idiot sh** are we supposed to put up with? Did someone take a poll? Well... Look at this. If I kill the coward, the witch hangs. Then do it already. You really think we can find the trident? Seriously, these people came back to work for Jack because of some mythical trident sh**. Why are they tying these people up? Because by God, if you tell me that it's a Fifty Shades sequel called Fifty Shades of Greybeard... <laughs> map is there! Karina expects a bunch of dumb assholes to know what she means by pointing to the sky. Sorry! <laughs> if he's lucky! 
Okay, sure, they didn't throw him in the sea, but surely if he landed like that, he's at least got a concussion and might be on his way to bleeding out. Also, pretty sure a full-size human being landing from 15 feet into a wooden boat would make enough noise to give away the ruse. I want to know where that pirate is going with that witch. Jesus, Karina wrote all the directions on her prison wall? That's f***ing amazing. So we've both spent our lives searching for our fathers. Well, no. You've seen your dad and you know where he is. You even stupidly nearly drowned yourself to see him. But I kind of admire that you're looking for any reason to find something in common with this woman. Just because you can't see something doesn't mean it's not there. Skip! The sun is up, and so is your time. We've seen Salazar's undead army immediately kill people when he taps his sword, but this guy decides, nah, I'll just put my sword to his throat. Maybe he'll talk his way out of it. There's no mercy. There's no mercy, the creed of apple-eating assholes everywhere. This type of bullet physics was disproven by Mythbusters, but I guess since Mythbusters didn't exist back then, those bullets didn't get the message. Scrawny Depp. Also, young Johnny Depp CGI mixed with another actor basically looks like what happens if you told the computer what the young version would look like. But young Johnny Depp doesn't look like this, really. Take a look at a picture from Nightmare on Elm Street, or 21 Jump Street, or even Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Well, maybe not that last one. One ship was trying to escape through the smoke. One that, despite the clear and decisive victory by Salazar, still had a full crew and sustained no damage. You surrender to me now, and I'll let you live! Ah, the magic of movies. You see, Salazar is actually a good guy in this story, even though he didn't want to show mercy to some filthy pirates after the battle was over. Jack is definitely the bad guy here, but because we supposedly love Jack, the story's flipped on its head. So now that we have this convenient backstory for Salazar and young Jack, how exactly did Salazar know it was the compass that cursed him again? And furthermore, how did the compass curse it? Jack got the job. Damn! Barbosa was saved at the last minute by a Jack Sparrow origin story. I rule pirates this stupid. Well, actually, the first movie was pretty clever. Oh, you mean the people. Carry on, then. So you know what would be cool? Half-dead skeleton sharks chasing our heroes to shore. But why would Salazar even have sharks? Didn't you hear me? Skeleton sharks! Who's gonna even care? CinemaSense cares, motherfuckers. CinemaSense cares. Also, I hate to say it, but the sharks from Finding Nemo look more realistic than these do. You have to swim for it. I'll distract them. Distract them? Aren't they magically honed in on Jack Sparrow? Why would clothes distract them? And why haven't they smashed his boat into smithereens yet? If they could do that, then why didn't they do it from the very beginning? Why send zombie sharks? F***ing f***. They're unable to step on land. Well, unless they're also standing on some sort of moisture. Then they're totally okay. The spirit world must have a terrible time figuring out how much is enough water in the can't-stand-on-land scenario. Help me! Help her! <laughs> Cool traps, bro. So, how did you set that one up on a three second delay? You promised me Jack's blood! But Jack be trapped! He can never escape that island! He's the land! Why does Salazar waste time killing all of Barbosa's underlings, and not Barbosa himself, if he's so mad about Jack being on land? Wake up, Sparrow. It's time to pay your debt. Oh, of course, they crash on an unknown, uncharted, unreachable island, and there are pirates there who know Jack and have a beef with him. Congratulations. It's your wedding day. God! Damn it! Oh, what are those things? This movie wants to be 90 minutes, but like the gluttony victim in Seven, someone kept feeding it until it burst. You like seafood, do you? I'm surprised there wasn't a real-life mutiny on this set when the actors and crew were told, we need to spend an entire week filming Jack Sparrow's fake wedding. Even if it was just a day or a few hours, it was too much. The only safe place is the land. Why are we going away from the land? This brings up another question. Why can Salazar step on a boat that just happens to be on water and still be considered on water if he's stepping on wood? Why didn't he get a couple glass boxes, fill them with seawater, and use them as shoes? We had something sharp. I could pick that lock. You're not gonna find anything okay. sharp in here. Cue the Fairly Brothers, gross toenail scene. We all know this f***ing toenail shouldn't be able to break them out of this cell, but man, are we not entertained. Also, they'll break out of this cell and quietly steal a rowboat from this British ship without a f***ing soul knowing about it. These bumbling pirates are quite amazing off-screen. Where did you get that from, Missy? I know this book. Oh, come on. No, you don't. You remember a f***ing book? you. Also, this is his daughter, isn't it? F*** me. Yes, we get it. She's his daughter. One more convenient, confusing, and convoluted story point to try and obscure that this plot is actually thinner than a skeleton pirate's shadow. Salazar decides to destroy the British ship, but I thought he hated pirates, not other people who hate pirates. Why not take on the Black Pearl in tandem? I was gonna sin this, but no, Jack probably can jump on all these wet cannons in the rain and not slip once. Why would I ever question that? Of course, this ship is cursed and can do crazy things. But why is this glorified hood ornament just now taking part in this battle? Also, why didn't Salazar just turn his ship into pirate Pac-Man like he's done so many times to so many other ships in this movie? He clearly doesn't care what kills Jack as long as he dies, so why go through all this trouble? After seeing Jack escape so many situations, he finally gets rammed by a f***ing cannon with the weight of an entire ship thrusting it, and he survives. Karina! Henry! Look! Congrats! You found the secret island! But how exactly did you survive Salazar's ship for the last ten minutes? This crew has killed everything with ease and impunity, and actually cut that British ship in half with a single bite. What is taking them so long to finish off this weak band of mortals? 
The island! Sure, you need to get off the ship, but you can't spare a half second to spear Sparrow through the heart before you go? Please? They took Henry! The Titan be all that can save him now. Yes, the magical MacGuffin awaits. It better have a 42 printed on it somewhere, because that thing is apparently the answer to life, the expanded universe, and everything. So, the ruby she's using here was on Galileo's diary, but where did Galileo get it? Poseidon was the one who made the map that no man can read. So that means he would have broken off this piece of ruby himself. And then what? He gave it to somebody? He chucked it into the sea? And somehow someone found that ruby and thought to himself, hmm, this ruby, I bet it's the key to finding Poseidon's trident. I will dedicate my life to it. Poseidon's island is a dick to people who figured out his stupid map. Once you possess the living, there's no coming back. You will be trapped in his body forever. Wait, so they can go on land if they possess someone? Setting aside that it's yet another new rule that we are just now hearing about, how do they even know these rules? Does every curse come with a handbook? Welcome to your curse. Here are a few things you need to know before you get started. What is it this year with movies where the protagonists go through all this shit to find an artifact, only to have to go through more shit after they've done all the hard stuff? This and Transformers 5 are the same movie, basically. What does the Trident even do? So he was able to unpossess Henry's body, which we were told was impossible without the Trident, but his skin condition hadn't cleared up one bit. So in its current state, it can take care of one curse, but not others? <laughs> All the power of Poseidon at Salazar's fingertips, and this still doesn't kill Jack. Oh, piss off! What did she just do there? It looked like she was reaching into the water, but why? Did she give the oncoming cursed pirates a hand signal? Was she busting their barnacles? Does anybody understand anything about what's going on here? This movie isn't even trying to keep it a secret that it's one big flushing toilet. To release the power of the sea, all must divide. If the Trident holds all the power, then... Then every curse is held inside. What? How do you make that leap of logic? The idea that this trident could break curses was one thing, but that it stores curses? The trident, an incredible artifact of power wielded by a sea god, cannot penetrate the defenses of Galileo's diary. Divide. Break. Break the trident and you'll break, break every curse of sea. I've never seen such nonsense get figured out this quickly. Also, now that they're going to break the trident to break the curse, how do curses get broken from here on out? Are curses eliminated forever? So the water is now an issue for you, but the half a head thing, that's still cool? Why is the water returning so slowly? Is there some sort of gradual gravity field release? Why wouldn't it just release immediately? This tattoo is so ridiculous, it might as well have said, For Karina, the daughter I gave away to an orphanage. And it would have been no worse. I mean, this special map that no man can read is tattooed on his body for a lame parentage reveal? Why not just have Mori Povich drop into the middle of the sea and reveal it? How is Barbosa this far above them? Didn't he knock them off the chain? Movie doesn't know how to gravity. You will write. Oh, totally. Just another one of those find out you have a father in the same moment he's sacrificing his life for you days. You? What did you do that for? Just checking it's truly, you're not still a ghost. Run, Henry, as fast and as far away from her as your sea legs will take you. Run now! After breaking the trident, Will's curse was lifted, and this movie didn't even show it on screen. A big moment for a legacy character. In fact, why isn't he already back on land? The curse was lifted and what? He still had to do more work? Let me tell you a tale. A tale of the greatest treasure known to man. That's a tale I want to hear. <laughs> I just watched it. No, you don't. Elizabeth didn't tag along with Henry to greet Will because she knew her surprise cameo would delight the five people still left in the theater. Captain Jack Sparrow on deck! Seriously, what's changed? You didn't get one red cent on your Poseidon adventure. You left Jack because of the lack of money. Nothing's different, but yeah, all hail Jack Sparrow. Just in case you forgot that you just watched a fifth movie squeezed out of a 16-minute amusement park ride. Post credits, it was a dream, but was it nonsense, completely undermines entire film by revealing that claw-handed, tentacle face guy is still somehow cursed, and also not dead. And also, who the hell even cares anymore? It means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Hello, James. Welcome. Do you like the island? My grandmother had an island. Nothing to boast of. We could walk around it in an hour. But still, it was it was a paradise for us. I'm looking for a pirate, Jack Sparrow. Bugger off. Psst, I need to speak with you. Do you believe that you can walk on water? <sighs> she was a fine ship.
Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. That's no ship, sir. It's a space station. What are you? I'm Batman. I'd like to take his his face off. Oh. You're a witch. I'm not a witch. I'm not a witch. But you are dressed as one. They dressed me up like this. <laughs>